welcome students in this lecture we are going to see the noise performance in dsb sc receiver using coherent detector do we know that dsb sc stands for double sideband suppressed carrier it's called double sideband suppressed carrier and a dsb sc wave it can be demodulated with the help of a detector named as coherent detector okay we are going to derive the figure of merit for this dsb sc receiver just to recollect let us know that figure of merit the formula is signal to noise ratio at the output to the signal to noise ratio at the input this is the formula to find the figure of merit let's look into the noise model of this coherent detector the input to this receiver is going to be a dsb sc wave double sideband suppressed carrier as usual we have represented this input as s of t and as the signal travels through the transmission medium it definitely gets affected by noise and this noise is an added is additive in nature usually it gets added with the signal that is why we have represented it using this summer symbol so this noise which is named as front end receiver noise gets added to the input now once the signal affected by noise reaches the receiver the very first component in the receiver is going to be a bandpass filter to filter out almost all the noise components but practically it is going to allow few bandwidth of noise to pass through it so at the output of bandpass filter we are going to get a signal component plus a narrow band noise component we are representing the output of bandpass filter as x of t so here signal comes completely through this bandpass filter and it will be designed in such a way that a part of noise will be eliminated it will not be allowed to pass through so only a narrow bandwidth of noise is allowed to pass and it is called narrow band noise and all these blocks this blocks they are called the blocks that are present in the coherent detector so all these represents the coherent detector a product modulator will be present a local oscillator will be present and an lpf will be present in a coherent detector see the reason is whenever we make use of a coherent detector to demodulate the signal we have to regenerate the carrier signal that we have used at the transmitter side and for regenerating the carrier that is this carrier that we use for demodulation it should be coherent with the carrier that we used for performing modulation at the transmitter side so to regenerate the carrier we need a local oscillator and it generates the carrier which is c of t that is a product modulator we know that a product modulator is one which multiplies the two inputs applied to it so the output of y of t we are going to get the product of these two then it is passed through a low pass filter out of which the output of which is the final output of the receiver we have represented it as y dash of t as usual we have to start with the equation of dsb sc and we have to proceed finding the signal to noise ratio at the input and then the signal to noise ratio at the output okay the dsb sc wave how will you generate a dsb sc wave dsb sc wave can be obtained by a simple product of message and carrier whenever we multiply a message with the carrier we will get a dsb sc wave so s of t can be expressed mathematically as the carrier component which is ac cos 2 pi fct into the message message we have represented it as m of t for simplicity okay we we are, we are not expanding this and writing it as vm cos 2 pi fmt instead we are representing it as m of t as such now we have to find input snr which is otherwise called as pre deduction snr or channel snr okay so uh, let us start with this equation the same equation okay now we have to find signal power at the input and noise power at the input to find the signal to noise ratio at the input let us find signal power to find the signal power we have to consider the amplitude alone so here ac is the amplitude of the carrier m of t has the amplitude of the message so we are considering only these two components to find the average signal power which is vrm square by root 2 so it is ac by root 2 the whole square it's going to be ac square by 2 and average power of the message usually will be representing it as p so it is ac square p by 
This is the input signal power. The next is the next component is called average input noise power. We have to find input noise power. So input noise power the formula is PSD of the noise into bandwidth. Usually we have to consider the power spectral density of white Gaussian noise which is N0 by 2. So N0 by 2 into bandwidth. Bandwidth of DSBFs, SC wave. This is DSB SC and for DSB SC also the bandwidth is 2FM. So we are considering it as 2FM. This is the power spectral density of white Gaussian noise. N0 by 2 into 2FM which will give us N0 into FM. Next we have to find the input signal to noise ratio which is the ratio of input signal power to the input noise power. Substitute input signal power and noise power will get the ratio as AC square P by 2 N0 into FM. As a next step we have to find the output signal to noise power to find the figure of merit which is otherwise called as post detection signal to noise power SNR. And for this for finding this we have to go step by step. The first block in the receiver is the bandpass filter. So let us find the output of bandpass filter as a first step. We have represented the bandpass filter's output as X of T which is S of T plus narrow band noise. Now as usual narrow band noise can be represented in rectangular form using in phase and quadrature phase components. So it is N i of T cos 2 pi F C T minus N Q of T sin 2 pi F C T. Now let us substitute S of T and N of T to get X of T. S of T is product of message and carrier. So AC M of T cos 2 pi F C T plus narrow band noise N i cos 2 pi F C T minus N Q sin 2 pi F C T. So this will be the output of bandpass filter. The next is product modulator. Before looking into product modulator let us observe the other component present within the coherent detector which is the local oscillator. Now the local oscillator is meant for regenerating the carrier. So output of this C of, uh, local oscillator we have represented it as C of T which is cos 2 pi F C T. Now this carrier is same as that of the carrier that we used at the transmitter side. So this is cos 2 pi F C T. Now what will happen here this C of T and X of T are given as input to the product modulator. So product modulator's output will be X of T into C of T. Now X of T we have represented as such three terms into C of T is cos 2 pi F C T. So we have to multiply this term with this term. When it gets multiplied it becomes AC cos square 2 pi F C T into M of T plus N i cos 2 pi F C cos 2 pi F C it becomes cos square 2 pi F C T minus N Q sin 2 pi F C T cos 2 pi F C T. This will be the output of product modulator. Now cos square theta can be taken as 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 so it becomes this. Likewise here also you have cos square term so 1 plus cos 2 theta sin a cos a can be taken as sin 2a by 2 because sin 2a is 2 sin a cos a so it becomes sin 2a by 2. The next is output of LPF. Output of LPF this is a low pass filter and we know that low pass filters removes all the high frequency components present. If you look into this, this term, this is the output of product modulator after grouping the common terms. AC M of T plus N I of T by 2 plus AC M of T plus N I of T into cos 4 pi F C T. It is twice that of the actual frequency. So this second term will not be allowed which has cos 4 pi F C T will not be allowed to pass through the low pass filter. Likewise here again you have sin 4 pi F C T which will also be rejected by the low pass filter. So the term that is allowed to pass through the low pass filter is going to be AC M of T plus N I of T by 2. So output of band, uh, low pass filter which is represented as Y dash of T will be AC by 2 M of T plus N I of T by 2. So this will be the output of the receiver DSB SC receiver. 
which again has a signal component and a noise component. So here after finding the output we have to find output signal power, output noise power then we have to find its ratio. Now average output signal power we have to find by considering the first term which is already we have AC by 2 so it becomes AC by 2 root 2 the whole square into P by considering the RMS. So it becomes AC square by 8 into P. Next we are supposed to find average output noise power and for finding the average output noise power the formula slightly changes because of the low pass filter that is present in this block diagram. This low pass filter was absent in the envelope detector but here it is present so the formula for finding output noise power becomes PSD of noise into transfer function of LPF magnitude square of transfer function of LPF into bandwidth. Okay. Now these two terms will not change. PSD of noise is going to be N0 by 2. Bandwidth of DSB SC is going to be 2 FM. We are supposed to find the transfer function and then take its magnitude square. Now LPF, the transfer function of LPF to find the transfer function. We know that transfer function is output by input. So input, so input to this LPF is Ni of t. Output of LPF we have obtained it as Ni of t by 2. So output is Ni of t by 2. The transfer function is output by input. So it becomes Ni of t by 2 divided by Ni of t. Right. So Ni of t gets cancelled and H of f which is the transfer function of low pass filter is going to be 1 by 2. Now we are going to find the magnitude square of it which is 1 by 4. So after substituting all these values PSD of noise, transfer function of LPF and bandwidth it becomes N0 by 2 into 2 FM into 1 by 4. So output noise power is going to be N0 FM by 4. We have determined the signal power and the noise power. Let us find the output signal to noise ratio. The formula is signal power by noise power. So substitute the signal power as well as the noise power. If we simplify this, output signal to noise ratio is AC square P by 2N naught FM. Okay. Our next step is to find the figure of merit. Figure of merit is gamma which is signal to noise ratio at the output by signal to noise ratio at the input. Let us substitute the in output signal to noise ratio and the input signal to noise ratio. If we observe these two, let we can see that both are same. So it gets cancelled and the figure of merit of this DSB SC wave is going to be unity 1. Okay. Now so we can conclude that the noise performance of this DSB SC is better compared to that of noise performance of AM which is DSB FC. Because in DSB FC the figure of merit is less than 0.5. Here in DSB SC it is unity so we uh, it's clear that the noise performance of DSB SC is better compared to that of conventional AM. Thank you.